following video is for the participants in the Certified Private Equity Professional Program. Today we're going to run through a private equity resume and I'm going to show you this template which will be available to all participants in the private equity pro professional designation. You'll have full access to this. Now to begin, we're going to start with entering your full name up here on the header, uh, professional email address. This would be something other than the one that you use to contact friends and family. Uh, usually something uh, either your school or your, uh, the company you work for that kind of thing a little more professional uh, firms will look at it if it's Celtics fan 98 they're probably not going to take you too seriously but uh, yeah so you should now let's move on to the uh, experience and you're going to go in sequential order uh, you don't want to confuse your employers by listing it out of order based on what you think is more important uh, say your most recent job you don't think is very relevant to private equity, you should still put it in sequential order. If it's really not relevant to private equity, don't list it at all. Uh, but usually uh, they want to know your full-time employment and they don't, they don't want to sift through it and try to figure out where, where you started at that company and when you left. Uh, that's just going to make it more confusing than them and they're probably not going to bother. Now, most recent position, say you're an analyst at Morgan Stanley. Uh, this is just a hypothetical. Um, and you're going to put the year when you started to current. You don't usually have to put the uh, actual date you left or the date you started. A lot of people don't remember it. Uh, pretty much the year is the important part. Uh, if you started at the end, if you started in December of 2003, don't list 2003 because we're going to look into it uh, and it will look like you're lying or trying to cover something up, exaggerate your resume. Uh, so it's just basically good to keep it pretty honest. Now you're going to start with the action item description of responsibilities. Uh, this usually starts with a uh, verb. So it's uh, if you were an analyst, uh, analyzed X and or you uh, worked with something that's an action item to begin with. Tangible uh, description of what you achieved for the company. Uh, in this case, uh, you oversaw transactions totaling an X value for the company. Uh, something like that that gives you, uh, that gives the employer uh, m a better idea of what you actually did and what you accomplished in your time at that firm. Uh, this is important to employers. It gives them a better sense of uh, what you've actually accomplished in your uh, career so far. Uh, now in the second position, say you are a fund marketer. Uh, just an example position. Uh, third party marketers United uh, just a fictional company but uh, you so your responsibilities would be uh, raised capital for uh, ex clients uh, ideally it would be alternative asset uh, management firms but uh, that would be your responsibilities again starting with an action item in this case raised uh, and now accomplishment, how much you raised, how much you brought into the company, uh, how many clients you added to the company, that sort of thing. Uh, first position uh, can really be anything. Uh, a lot of times it's something a little less relevant. A lot, of, Not many people come into uh, private equity with a host of different, exper uh, different various exper experiences that are really relevant to private equity. But some people repeat, uh, some people were an analyst at this firm, an analyst at that firm, and then they finally made the shift over to private equity or they're trying to. Uh, for this, you can, I mean, you can, some people are public relations. Uh, they, were, they were public relations at a company. And uh, that, that kind of thing is going to be relevant to an employer. Uh, it may not seem like it. Uh, private equity isn't really about public relations. Uh, but... It's going to be. It's going to show that you know how to communicate and you know how to deal with people, uh, and that's just that's just a good thing to put on your resume. So anything you think is going to be really helpful to your, uh, or a lot, or really beneficial to your uh, chances of getting in, is just list whatever you think is going to be helpful. Um, and you're going to again put the years, uh, responsibilities. Uh, you're going to be in charge of servicing clients, uh, accomplishment. Um, this one is a little more tricky. Uh, oversaw X amount of clients uh, and retain their services, something like that. Uh, now move on to the internship. 
this is uh, this would be great if you had an internship at a private equity firm, uh, just like KKR for example. Uh, now, not many people are going to be uh, going to be able to have an internship at a uh, private equity firm, especially not one as large as KKR. But if you have any sort of relevant internship, uh, that would be great to add, especially because a lot of times you uh, get training in this that will be helpful to uh, private equity firms because then they don't have to train you in these areas. So if you already had, uh, for example, training in due diligence, uh, they're not going to have to teach you that, uh, and you're going to be able to bring over what knowledge you've gained there and help them too. So it's it's always important to uh, to show what you what you actually gained through that internship. You weren't just sitting at a desk for three months. You actually gained knowledge that's going to be helpful in private equity. Again, the comp the accomplishment you've done. Uh, say you helped on a deal, write that. Uh, now let's move on to the graduate university name. Uh, you're going to put the name of the uh, school. Uh, in this example, let's say Harvard Business School. Now, I'm not going to go through every, uh, fill in each one because it's kind of difficult. The formatting is going to get all screwed up. But degree, you're going to put Masters, uh, masters of Business Administration. Uh, specification, say you focused on, uh, I don't know, uh, an analysis of uh, business transactions. Something like that you focused on specifically. Some people even focused on private equity. Uh, there are some schools that offer private equity uh, training to their uh, business students. So this would be this would be good for you to add that, especially um, your GPA. Uh, hopefully, it's high. Uh, they do look at that, and it's important. If it'll show if you have a GPA of 2.5 or something, they're going to see that and say, "Well, you really weren't able to keep up." and that's going to show in your job performance as well. Um, especially when you get down to uh, undergraduate, if you do feel the need to uh, cite your GPA, I wouldn't cite it unless it's uh, something above the three point range because that's going to at least show that you were uh, aware and you were actually uh, doing work in college. But especially in business school, they want to know your GPA, they want to know how well you did. Um, you're going to list relevant coursework in finance, investing, business, uh, unique course that others may have uh, have on the, may not have on their uh, resume. For example, if you did a business management course in London, they want to know that. Uh, that also helps because then they know that you have connections in London and that you're comfortable working there. So different areas uh, geographically is really beneficial to you. Uh, programs or skills learned in graduate school. Um, this perhaps you uh, there are some clubs that actually let you uh, manage private equity uh, private equity firms. Or, sorry, manage a private equity fund with the uh, help of the faculty. I've talked to a few people that have done this. Uh, so, I mean, if you did something that really is going to transfer into private equity, list it. Um, nothing hurts. Um, now let's go into the undergraduate uh, education. You can put the university name. Uh, let's just say Yale. Why not? Might as well aim high. Uh, and then you're going to say the degree you got. Uh, which would be bachelor's of uh, bachelor of arts, bachelor of science, um, and then the major, uh, typically business. But a lot of people come from very diverse backgrounds. Some people don't know until they get into business school exactly what they want to do. So this could be whatever it is. Uh, and some firms uh, say you actually majored in Italian. If you majored in a, a specific language, that's going to be very helpful to a private equity firm. Uh, because they know that they can place you in an area, uh, or they can have you talk to their clients that are uh, that speak the language. But overall, uh, they're not going to look too hard on what you major on in undergraduate. Uh, if you got an academic award, uh, let's change this back to business. Uh, if you got an academic award, it's going to be uh, it's going to show that you actually were doing stuff in uh, college again. They don't want they want to know that you weren't just slacking all through it and suddenly woke up and decided you want to do private equity. But that is more going to show in your internships, your uh, actual experience working. But still, it's uh, it's important to note. Uh, and you're going to put the month and year you graduated, of course. Uh, what you focused on during undergraduate e education. Um, even if you didn't focus on something that's really relevant to private equity, uh, it's going to be honest. Just say what you were interested in at that time. and. 
sometimes it opens up. I've been in interviews where I've talked about what I've done uh, early on in college, and they've been uh, and they were pretty interested to know what made me change my focus uh, more to whatever I'm whatever I'm interviewing for the position. Uh, and that's just that's just something pretty standard that uh, shows that you're a diverse candidate. Various clubs or associations you were for, you formed or were a part uh, were a member of. Uh, a lot of people at schools form private equity clubs, uh, venture capital uh, clubs, where they just either talk about it. Uh, some even invest, as I said. Uh, but overall, it's just a place to network and meet with people. And some people have actually started a uh, networking association for it. Um, and that's going to be helpful to employers. They know that you're able to network, talk to people, uh, and that you're actively pursuing private equity or business in general. Uh, any research or study relevant to private equity? Um, I've talked with, uh, talked with a student recently who was completed his undergraduate work, and he had actually focused on uh, leverage buyouts, which is a which is pretty interesting and especially good to know for a uh, for a private equity firm. They want to know that you were interested that long ago. That's going to show you that you're dedicated to the industry and you want to learn more about it. And you're not just coming in for quick money or anything like that. You're dedicated to the industry. Uh, again, a lot of people have uh, if sometimes they put thesis uh, on a part of private equity. That's going to be really important to them. Publications, uh, PDF or website URL. Uh, you want to insert that up here in this section. And uh, if you, I uh, I work with a guy who put together a book on hedge funds, and he did that before he uh, would walk into interviews. He would have that ready, and it was a printed book that he actually self-published. But employers would look at that and they'd say, wow, this guy's really serious. He knows what he's doing, and it just looks really good for you. So if you have any extra time, if you have a summer off, I would definitely suggest writing a educational book on something related to it. It um, doesn't have to be long. It uh, just shows that you're interested, that you're able to do it, and a lot of times you leave a copy with the employer uh, so you can see that you actually know how to talk about it, you know about the industry. Um, and an example publication, uh, some students are able to get uh, published in, for example, like a business publication. Uh, a lot of business schools have their own uh, journal that they're publishing. And if you get published in there, that's uh, that's really good. And if you uh, assisted in research for a faculty member, that's also uh, that also helps you earn points in the uh, interview process and on your resume. Awards and extracurricular activities. Uh, this would be, uh, involve uh, professional awards, such as Top University Business Students 2010. Um, I know with uh, one of my associates has uh, he actually earned uh, one of the top Portland business students uh, when he was in the uh, in undergraduate, and it was because he had, he had run a small business and he'd done very well for himself, and he gets to put that on his resume, and that really helps to show that he is able to run a business, and that helped that helped immensely throughout his career. Now, uh, extracurricular activities that promote professional qualities. Uh, this can include Toastmasters, a lot of people belong to that uh, that group, um, and it's really good for professional uh, resumes. Uh, also private equity club, uh, volunteering, uh, just anything to show you're a diverse candidate, you have a lot of abilities. Uh, and also list whatever networking association or groups you participated in, especially if you uh, actually launched this association. Uh, for example, I created the private equity investment group on LinkedIn. Uh, networking association. If I was going to interview, I would, uh, and I didn't have much else, exp much other experience, I would have listed that as one of my, uh, one of my accomplishments in the uh, extra extracurricular activities section of it because I have 38,000 members on that, uh, and that would be important to an employer. It shows that you're able to get out there, you're able to talk with people, and you're able to get ideas out there uh, in a quick way. Um, also. Uh, if you maintain networking contacts, uh, Rolodex, or perhaps just an Excel spreadsheet on your computer of networking contacts that you uh, that you know, that, that shows that you're able to uh, talk to people in the industry and be able to get out there, and you're not going to be nervous, and you're going to be able to uh, sell your company in the future and uh, market your firm, and that's, that's important to them. All right, so I hope this gave you a good overview of private equity resume. Uh, it's important to note that this isn't, 
necessarily everything that you need to include and some of these things you won't need to include. Uh, eventually it, you're going to have to make a decision what is important to, what is important about your history and what qualities you want to market to an employer. And uh, But overall I think this is a good start and this resume template will be available to all of those in the Certified Private Equity Professional uh, Program. So I hope this has been helpful. Good luck.